Simon, let's you and I concentrate on this one. Um, uh, New Newcastle United co-owners Amanda Savely and uh, Merdad Godossi, her husband, set to leave the football club. Um, of course, uh, Newcastle now under Saudi ownership uh, and Amanda Savely very much central to uh, the brokering of that deal which saw the Saudis go in to Newcastle United. Before you give me your take on that, um, you probably well remember, Simon, and I'm sure the listeners do, uh, the morning that Newcastle fans were down in London and uh, we were joined by one or two of them uh, who were calling in. They were protesting in London over what they perceived to be uh, the Premier League dragging its feet over the Saudi takeover of their football club. That was way back in July 2021. Seems like a long time ago now, and it certainly uh, pretty much is. Uh, Amanda Savely joined us uh, that day on the show, and one thing led to another between yourself and herself, and it pretty much developed. You might recall this. Have a listen. The government have always already responded through the DCMS saying it's nothing to do yeah. with them about the internal processes of the Premier League. It's for the Premier League to resolve that. And the 20 clubs in the Premier League, of which Newcastle are one, are well gifted to change that rule to bring arbitration and matters like this into the public domain and transparency as a matter of course. It's for, it's for the Premier League and the 20 clubs, of which Newcastle have had 28 years to vote for a change around transparency of arbitration rules. So, so what's your point to Amanda? So, so what my point is, is this is you're barking at the moon. Simon, I think actually you're wrong, and I'll tell you why. Sport has changed. You said you've got 20 years and you're barking at the moon. Well, actually, football's changed dramatically in the last two years. And I agree with you. Of COVID. Okay, yeah. Just, I know you're not pro our deal, and I'm not going to get into a, a spitting fight over on talk sport. Mm -hmm. OK, and that's fine. And you have your opinions and that's fine. OK, but you've never met me. You don't know who I am. You've never looked at our business plan and you've never considered and you aren't aware of the facts over the last. Mandel, years Mandel, you just said you didn't want to have a battle. So, so, so let's not get into that because now you're getting into it. Time to answer your question. On you go, okay? Amanda. On you go. The Premier League have the right, your right to, to vote this. And that's what we, we might do. That's what we've asked to do. But there is a board. The Premier League is run by a board. And those, those boards are, are allowed to make decisions about how these processes run. Now, arbitration is, or is with a particular point on a particular point of law. It is not something that you can say is typical of the process that has been going on to do with sports arbitration over the last year. So if the Premier League can make that decision, you're right. The government have asked for, the government have said this process should be transparent. They're supportive of it. Why don't you think, Simon, it should be? And that was that. Um, uh, Amanda Stavely <laughs> joined us that day. She was adamant, Simon, that a deal would happen. Yeah. And indeed it did. Um, Amanda brought the Saudis to the Premier League and they became the owners of Newcastle United. Does yeah. the same Amanda Stavely, who is now leaving Newcastle United, does she go down as one of the most influential, significant power brokers in Premier League history? For Newcastle, I think she's been very influential. We have to recap properly on what actually was happening, which was that the um, the Saudis were pirating BN Signal and nicking their Premier League games and broadcasting them in Saudi. And no one, not Amanda or anybody, was able to forecast that about a week later, um, no, a little bit longer, about two months later, sorry, um, that out of the blue, the Saudis were going to cop to piracy, which was the only reason the Premier League was stopping them from owning a football club, because... It wouldn't be appropriate for Fox to be in the hen house. You can't nick the broadcast signal and ultimately pirate something and then be invited into the gang. No one's going to want to do that. So there was a complete and utter change, which was they copped to piracy, be out Q being the broadcaster boarding from Saudi. They paid a billion pounds of compensation to BN, and the Premier League waved through a transaction that they had no reasons to object to. Of course, they should be objecting to it because it really shouldn't be allowed for a nation state to buy a football club, which is what's happened. And this ridiculous assumption that they haven't when the same people that run uh, the uh, Live Golf have copped to being a nation state, the PIF fund. But Amanda was very influential in getting some very, very well healed financially um, uh, adept people into a position to buy Newcastle United. And you've given her credit for that. And she has to be given credit for that. Yep. I mean, she has said some stupid things over the last two or three years. She did get herself into a difficult position with Steve Bruce. That she almost got herself sued over saying ridiculous things about him in terms of the fact he didn't want to manage the football club and couldn't wait to get out the door. She has been prone to turning around to telling everybody that they're going to win everything. 
um, from the well, Premier she League. Told me that, yeah, then. and, and, and that the probably is un unadvised. She has also sat on business conferences and said things that perhaps least said soonest mendis. But we've all done that, and she has had a fallout with Mike Ashley because ultimately she bought some money from Mike Ashley to buy the shares that she was she had in the first place and had to repay that. But she will have been absolutely fundamental with her Rolodex to getting these guys. Of course, there's a natural fit between a London property developer like Jamie Rubin and Newcastle. Nothing to do with property deals they might be doing in Newcastle. It's all about football. Um, but it, these guys are at the table. It gives Newcastle an opportunity. And Amanda was part of that. And, um, you know, I said to you that she won't be there for that long. She's been there longer than I anticipated. But you cannot discredit the fact that she was instrumental in bringing these... Whether you think they're right or wrong for the Premier League, and I happen to think whichever club that the nation-state buys is probably wrong for the ecosystem of football, but that's, that ship has sailed. We've allowed it. And Amanda Staveley goes away, having done very nicely for herself out of the transaction, and Newcastle have got a set of owners that while will benefit them in the longer game, probably in the eyes of the fans, much more than Mike Ashley ever did, Evidently, yeah, because you can see a football team. But she succeeded in a high st stakes game, didn't she? She she succeeded in well, terms it, of what she set out to well, do. Well, depends if you're the Saudis. If you think that the cost implications and uh, of the, some of the decisions that she made along the way to getting the journey done, which ultimately involved them paying a billion quid in compensation to Bian and a whole raft of costs to get to the point where they could acquire the football club. Um, is great for them, then that's the view that you that they have or, or they don't have. Amanda got them in the door. They bought Newcastle, and you look at it for 300 million quid. Or you look at a, a, a team in the Premier League for 300 million quid when you look at clubs being sold for 2.5 billion. Um, it's a great deal. It's a great deal. Um, and she was instrumental in that. But it wasn't her money. So, so with that, with all due respect, she was clever at manipulating the circumstances to get people that wanted to buy a football club. She orchestrated a deal. She got 10% shareholding out of it. She's probably cashed out very nicely out of that. And fair play to her. Fair play to her. Yep. So Amanda Stavely and her husband, Merdal Gudusi, set to leave Newcastle United. We'll keep a, a, a close watch on that as uh, these clubs and, of course, managers getting back to the day job, getting back to their clubs and preparing for next season. As crazy as that sounds, as we're still out here at the Euros. That, that was one of the top business stories in the world of football. And we did that thanks to Tesco's uh, Business Roundup. Uh, stay with us. We're coming up to half 12 back home, half one over here in Dusseldorf. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.